The interesting thing about an objective truth is that it's true no matter what. Imagine that. An unrelenting stream of immigration. Non-stop. Non-stop. I want to welcome everybody to the Border Security Summit here in Del Rio, Texas. And at this time, I'll turn it over to the governor and his staff, Governor Greg Abbott. I want to thank Sheriff Martinez for being the host sheriff for this today. Give it up for Sheriff Martinez. I appreciate all that, that he and every man and woman involved in law enforcement are doing, especially to step up and help secure our border. If you look over here, you see a wall full of white hats. These are his fellow sheriffs who are doing their part to help secure the border in the Lone Star State. Listen, one thing that we talked about, we've been in meetings all day, and one thing we know, and that is a border crisis is plaguing the farmers, the ranchers, the residents of the entire border region. Fences are being mowed down. You have livestock and crops that are being destroyed. You have homes that are being invaded in neighborhoods that simply are not as safe as they used to be. Law, law enforcement. Your law enforcement officers, they're having to redirect their resources to deal with the border as opposed to deal with what they normally deal with, which is keeping your community safe every day. Yeah. County judges and mayors. County judges and mayors are facing skyrocketing expenses because of the border crisis. Change is needed to fix the border crisis problem. These challenges that we're talking about are a direct result of the open border policies in place right now. And you look at the numbers to see it. If you compare last April to this April, you see that last April there were about 17,000 people who were apprehended. This April, more than 170,000. That's a 1,000 percent increase. The same applies for May. In May of last year, there were about 23,000 people apprehended. This May, more than 180,000. It is out of control, and a change is needed. One of the reasons for this massive increase of the number of people coming across the border is because the Remain and Mexico policy that was working has now been eliminated, and now people are more easily allowed to come across the border. Another thing is, is that there's a difference in commitment. There used to be a commitment to say we are going to secure our border. Now the commitment is anybody who wants to come in is going to be allowed to come in. A change is needed. <laughs> Cartels, drug smugglers, and human traffickers, they're profiting off of all of this. They're making money by smuggling people in from countries you haven't even heard of before. It comes from 160 different countries across the entire globe. Senegal, Bangladesh, Uzbekistan, and fentanyl. Fentanyl is invading your communities. The chief of the Texas Department of Public Safety, Steve McCraw, just to my right, he told me that during the first four months of this year, they experienced a, an 800 percent increase in the amount of fentanyl they apprehended in Texas. And that's just DPS, not counting your local law enforcement or federal law enforcement. He said that just DPS alone, just in the first four months of this year alone, they have apprehended enough fentanyl that could kill 21 million people. We cannot 
let that happen in Texas. So let me tell you what we have been doing and let me tell you what we are going to do. Our initial response to all of this, our initial response to the new administration's open border policies was to create what's called Open Lone Star. It's, it's an effort by the, by the, that combines the Texas Department of Public Safety and the Texas National Guard, where I deployed more than a, a thousand Texas Department of Public Safety officers, as well as National Guard, to our border to begin the apprehension and arrest process of people coming across the border. The, tex the, the Texas Department of Public Safety, they've arrested more than 1,500 people, and together they have apprehended more than 35,000 people who've come across our border. But what we've done already is more than any state ever in the United States. But one thing we realize is that far more is needed. And it's needed for very simple reasons. We need to recognize that the numbers of people coming across the border are just going to continue to increase unless we change the game plan. The location where they're coming across the border has already changed, and those who live here in Valverde County have seen that. It used to be highly focused in the, the Rio Grande Valley region. Now we see a massive increase in the number of people coming across the border where we are right now, which is in Valverde County. And the people coming across, especially in Valverde County, are changing also. It's not so much the unaccompanied minors. You have very dangerous people who are involved in human trafficking, drug trafficking, people that if you encounter, you don't know if you're going to walk away safely from. You should not have to face that danger in your community. A change is needed. So tonight I am announcing additional action that we are taking to secure the border and to restore order here in the border region. First is what we're doing right now. This emergency called Border Security Summit that brings together local officials and residents to talk about immediate solutions. Not something we're going to do next year, not something that will begin next month, but something that will begin immediately. Second, I am right now invoking Article 4 of the Texas Constitution to form the Governor's Task Force on Border and Homeland Security. It will help all of us to work on ways to stem the flow of unlawful immigration and to, to uh, stem the flow of illegal contraband. In this task force that I'm going to be signing right now, it includes the following members. The Office of the Governor, the Office of the Attorney General of Texas, the Texas Department of Public Safety, the Texas Division of Emergency Management, the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, the Texas Commission on Law Enforcement, and the Texas Commission on Jail Standards. And they will meet every two weeks with the Texas Border Sheriff's Coalition, county judges, mayors, property rights organizations, concerned citizens, and prosecutors in border communities. And we will work these every two weeks to make sure that we are coming up with every solution to make your border safer. So I'm going to sign. I'm going to sign this governor's task force right now. Today, the governor's task force to better secure the border begins. Third, see these documents right here? This is just one part of the budget that the Texas legislature passed this last session. Included in the part of the budget I'm holding up is an allocation of more than $1 billion by the state legislature for border security in Texas. And I. I'm hereby approving this billion-dollar allocation to border security in Texas tonight.
This will add more boots on the ground. It's going to add more aircraft and drones in the air, more boats in the water. It's going to provide the resources that you need to begin to step up and more meaningfully address the border challenges that you face. Fourth, I have already issued a gubernatorial disaster declaration for 34 counties that requested assistance because of the border security. So this is the first time I've seen a gubernatorial disaster declaration made for such a cause. Typically it's for things like hurricanes. This, however, is a disaster that we're dealing with on the border and it deserves a governor's disaster declaration to provide you the resources and the help you need immediately. Fifth, next week I will be issuing a new disaster de declaration, creating an enhanced border security plan. This plan includes an intensified focus to make sure that we make it even more difficult for people to come into the state illegally and to make sure there are consequences for people who come into the state illegally. What this will do, it will focus on making arrests. The Department of Public Safety will work with local officials to arrest anyone who enters our state illegally and is found trespassing, engaged in vandalism, criminal mischief, or smuggling. We will be arresting a lot more people in the future. So, more jail space will be required. So, we're working with the Texas Commission on Jail Standards and TCOL that will work with counties to expand jail space. But this can only happen when local communities participate. We need local officials like the ones I've spoken to today, your sheriffs, your mayors, your county judges, your county attorneys, your district attorneys. This is a team effort because we don't want just to arrest somebody to have them released. We want to arrest somebody to have them prosecuted, to be put in jail, to stay in jail, to create an environment where people will choose. They don't want to come across the border in the state of Texas anymore because it's not what they were expecting. It's not the red carpet that the federal administration rolled out to them. They are going to jail in the state of Texas. Sixth, the ability to arrest will be enhanced by building border barriers. Some of these border barriers will be, will be built immediately. Whenever anybody tries to modify, attempt, or get through any of these border barriers, that in itself is a crime for which they can be arrested. But on top of that, I will announce next week the plan for the state of Texas to begin building the border wall in the state of Texas. Seventh, one thing I think we can all agree on, the border crisis is bigger than the state of Texas. It affects the entire country. The spread of deadly fentanyl is just one example. We need other states in the United States of America to join our effort. So tonight, at this moment, Arizona Governor Ducey and I are invoking an interstate compact power that empowers states to help one another in times of disaster and emergency. We're calling on other states to send reinforcements. Our greatest need is for law enforcement officers, equipment like drones and helicopters and jailers. Right here is the interstate compact that I'm going to be signing. States across America, come to Texas, help us solve this border crisis. Eighth, 
landowners need relief too. It is wrong that they are left to foot the bill for damages caused to their property by people who are here illegally. The federal government should pay for those damages. The task force that I talked about earlier, the governor's task force about the border, will work with landowners to seek recovery from the federal government for the damages that were caused by the federal government. In closing, let me just add this. Contrary to the way some people have acted, the border crisis is no laughing matter. This is something that also is not a tourism site for members of Congress to make an annual pilgrimage to and see the border and then go back and do absolutely nothing at the federal government level to solve the crisis. Long term, only Congress and the President can fix our broken border. But in the meantime, Texas is going to do everything possible, including beginning to make arrests to keep our community safe, to keep the cartels and smugglers out, and to keep your community safe. We are going to do everything we can to secure the border, and it begins immediately today, right here in Val Verde County. Fewer than 50 percent of the people in America from then and on will be white European stock. That's not a bad thing. It's not going to stop, nor should we want it to stop. A leader of the Texas response for years now has been the director of the Texas Department of Public Safety, Steve McCraw. Director McCraw, the mic is yours. Governor, thank you, Governor. Thank you for your leadership. And sheriffs, and thank you for your partnership. Well, since this is not working very well, Governor, I'm just going to go ahead and talk, if you there don't you, mind. There you go. Well, there we go. Okay. Okay. It's something Texans have known for a long period of time in terms of South Texas and certainly all across the border is that the consequences of an unsecure border is substantial. It's felt in stash houses. We listened to the mayor earlier and talked about it. We talked about high-speed pursuits. We talked about it in terms of organized criminal activity. There's nothing more significant in terms of a crime threat in Texas and the Mexican cartels and their collaboration with violent gangs throughout the state, including transnational gangs. The governor launched Operation Lone Star, and we operational op launched this specifically to address some of these particular threats. And the operational goal, like all law enforcement professionals, is to prevent crime from happening. At the end of the day, though, you have to enforce the law to be able to do that. And I, some of the issues you see in terms of problems that we listen to, landowners, in terms of going through fences in terms of all the things in terms of invading homes invasions all these things are happening but yet the consequences are not left solely on the border the consequences are throughout our state and really throughout our nation and mexico pays a substantial consequence because of the unending demand for trafficking uh, drug trafficking that occurs and they are the most significant domestic threat to, to violence, but certainly in Mexico, domestic threat to their uh, existence. The collaborative effort is exactly that. I mean, the governor wanted and they demanded and directed the Department of Public Safety to work with our local partners and also with the Border Patrol to, to conduct high intensity operations between the ports of entry to deter, detect, interdict, but more importantly, to protect people and to protect property. The tactics utilized by the cartels are well known by our law enforcement professionals. And bailouts, high-speed chases, and you see this on the river. Actually, we have seen the cartels actually use boats to move pickup trucks across the river with, with, uh, with, with drugs. As you can see here, the number of pursuits in the area are one of the things that you hear about from ranch landers, but you hear about the, the public themselves in terms of the danger it presents. Vehicle incursions we talked about. 
is driving in the center lane, speeds 85 miles per hour. This is what your local law enforcement professionals see every day along. Okay, vehicle just rolled a uh, standby. We're going to go southbound, undescribed roadway. One occupant, one, correction, one driver. Got a flat tire. What the Mexican cartels do, they collaborate and coordinate. They have scouts on this side of the border, and they run interference and have even secondary vehicles that support the smuggling operation. No, we're good. We're, good. Uh, we're coming up to a dead end coming up. Just give us a space. It's probably in a 10, 15 a bit. No traffic. Let's go. No traffic. He's all this control on his own. They're giving him space. They're talking with their with cartel operatives that are on the other side of the river. Watch this. Throwing a log in front of the trooper. He's all this control on his own. Then they've got other scouts that are already in place. And this is what you'll see troopers and deputies and board patrol agents deal with every day. And of course, we recognize that these organized crime groups, which are the most powerful organized crime groups in the nation, are involved in the lucrative drug trafficking and smuggling operations. And right here, they're, they're doing is they're protecting the, the amount of money they got invested in this particular drug deal. Because that vehicle, as you'll soon see, was directed and headed back to the river, Rio Grande River, splashed down to the Rio Grande River, and they had already coordinated with boat retrieval teams that are operated by the cartels. That's what's going on every day. It takes them two minutes to get back across the border. That quickly. Traverse. Here's a, one of the things that Governor deployed. He wants us to use all our assets. We've got over 100 UAV teams. And this is in a UAV operation, and you'll see directing a Border Patrol agent into a arrest location of an individual. The governor mentioned over 35,000 referrals of illegal aliens that came across the border. Now, in this population, is when we turn them over, is that there's always these the criminal, or just for, frankly, there's foreign criminals from around the world, and the governor mentioned some of those countries, that are coming here and exploiting the opportunity to come here and have already been convicted and already been deported, when I say convicted, convicted of violent crimes in Texas and elsewhere, enter the United States, get deported, have been deported, and come back again. Weapons, okay, so we always know about the, the cartel's involvement in marijuana, cocaine, methamphetamine, heroin, and now fentanyl and they dominate those markets, and they have factories in Mexico producing those things. But weapons are very important to them because they're engaged in a, a violent war between themselves and with the government of Mexico. And as you can see, those are the type of seizures that happen in Operation Lone Star. And you'll notice that there's a, a 50 caliber sniper rifle at the end of that. And you'll notice that the director is, uh, is not doing a very good job with a PowerPoint presentation, but <laughs> it's another thing. We've always, the Mexican cartels have always done a very good job, unfortunately, of, of, of seeking and recruiting our children along the Texas-Mexico border to support their cartel operations, smuggling operations.
And they're fully employing social media. Here's another one. This is on private property. I mentioned recruiting our, our children to run smuggling operations in the Rio Grande Valley, Del Rio sector, El Paso sector as well in terms of smuggling. The cartels are, are now reaching out because they need more labor to the cities in Houston, uh, San Antonio and others using social media promising lots of money. And so traditionally we've seen you know, most of the arrests on smuggling operations of individuals are located inside the uh, South Texas area or West Texas area. Now they're coming from Dallas, coming from Houston, with the promise of, of this type of money. Now these are examples of uh, Operation Drawbridge. I think many of our ranchers in here understand that program, and examples of what individuals are involved in. And that's the type of you expect every day in terms of numbers. Here's another picture from a camera, as you can see. And the asset lay down, and the governor's been very clear about whatever we have needs to be down here in working with our local partners and Border Patrol. And you can, as you can see, that means everything on the river, our tactical boat teams, it means our tactical operators that relates to Ranger Recon, our SWAT, SRT. It also means UAV assets I mentioned earlier. It means our, 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 our surveillance aircraft as well as our helicopters and, of course, troopers, rangers, and special agents. Special agents engaged in covert operations in terms of not just attacking or, or targeting smuggling operations, but also engaged in you know, covert patrols as long with uh, high visibility patrols with the troopers. Importantly in this framework is, is fully integrated with our local partners, with our sheriffs, making sure that we're fully coordinated in that regard, they know what's going on, that we're working with them in that regard, and the same thing with the U.S. Border Patrol. Governor, that's Operation Lone Star. Very good. Thank you. Give it up for Director Steve McCraw. I want to thank the men and women who wear the uniform of the Texas National Guard. They have been... They've served overseas. They have rescued people from Hurricane Harvey, and now they're spending a lot of time trying to help secure the border. And the leader of the Texas National Guard is Adjutant General General Norris. General, thank you for being here. Yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> sir, I want to reiterate the support of the National Guard and especially all the employers out there who have National Guards and working for them. Thank you very much for your support. First of all, I just want to talk a couple of things about what, um, how the National Guard, the te your Texas National Guard, is in support of the border security mission. Um, currently, in March of this year, Governor Abbott um, called the Guard up in a state active duty status in direct support of the Department of Public Safety. Over our, half of our soldiers on this mission live and work in the area where they are, as well as over a third of them are Spanish speakers. Uh, the mission currently that we're doing is uh, we are an expanded listening post and observation post for the Department of Public Safety and also coordinating with local law enforcement through DPS. Um, when we're doing those LPOPs, uh, we have uh, interconnected fields of view so we can see the whole river in the area where we are. Uh, right now, mainly it's been in the Rio Grande Valley, but we're going to be expanding based on um, today. 
Uh, with that, though, we, we help DPS have expanded eyes and ears um, on the border. We also bring night vision capability and multi-sensor systems uh, to sense people coming across the border. We also have our counter drug program, which has been a long existing program, but with that program, it also brings air aviation assets, um, limited, but it does, they do um, have aviation assets, which is a good thing. We also are assisting when uh, immigrants, uh, we may have large groups that come across the border, if they surrender to us or they, um, to our soldiers, uh, we will hold them until DPS or Border Patrol can come and make sure they're secured. And so with that, those are the things that we're doing now, and we look forward to uh, continuing to support DPS on the future part of this mission. And, and Governor, they're doing a great job. Thank you, General. In uh, Texas, uh, we have probably the best state emergency and disaster response team in the United States, uh, and it is headed up uh, by the, Chief Nim Kidd, Chief of the Texas Division of Emergency Management. He is here because he is in charge of helping the state respond whenever the governor declares a disaster like what I've declared for this region because of the border crisis. Nim Kidd, Chief Nim Kidd, will be heavily involved in working with all of your local officials as well as some of the residents as you respond to this crisis. Chief Nim Kidd. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, and thank you to all of us for joining us tonight. Uh, you know, Chapter 418 of the Texas Government Code is known as the Disaster Act of 1975. This is not a new tool or resource. That Disaster Act says that your elected mayor and your county judge are the emergency management directors for your communities. If you live in a city, your mayor is your emergency management director. If you live in the unincorporated area of the county, your county judge is the emergency management director. Out of the 34 counties that Governor Abbott declared, 17 of those county judges have also declared a disaster. Now, the things that we want to talk about tonight are implementing the local emergency management plans, which will require those other 17 county judges to get on board. What that will do is it will allow us, just like any other disaster, to track costs, to track resources, and to bring in uh, additional support. One of the jobs that our team will work with, the local officials, your mayors, your judges, your sheriffs, police chiefs, fire and EMS chiefs, because this is having a toll on fire and EMS as well, to work with your local partners to figure out how much money they've been spending so far so that we can work with the legislature and hopefully work with the federal government to get some reimbursement. The second piece is, as the governor mentioned, is the sharing of resources between local jurisdictions. We do fire and EMS transfers all over the state almost on a weekly basis. We have great programs out there where local fire departments and local EMS agencies band together to support each other. We'll continue that mission with our law enforcement partners and public works and anybody else that we need to bring to the fold. The next piece of this will be asking for the federal assistance and from other states, like the governor talked about in the EMAC, the Emergency Management Assistance Compact. What that will do is it will allow us to talk to your elected officials at the local level, find out unmet needs or resources that we can ask for, and then work across the other states and territories for them to send in their local and state officials and to support you and to support us. So that's a process we use frequently for hurricanes and fires and floods and tornadoes. We will now use this to support the Governor's Border Initiative in these missions here. And then the final, cost, uh, the final piece is cost recovery. The far majority of our time we work with cities and counties and, and certain private nonprofits to track the expenses and apply for federal assistance. This will be two parts for us. We will track those expenses and work with the governor's office and the legislature to make sure we're funding your local emergency services, and, and that'll be their job to, to figure that out. But the most important piece that I want to turn on here in a few weeks is a, is a product we use for individual assistance. So where you have had uninsured loss to your property, we're going to give you a, a website to go to and a little QR code to fill out. And much like your car insurance now where you take a picture after a wreck and send it in, we've built a platform where you can start tracking your damages and we can work, as the governor said, to try to get the federal government to reimburse those expenses. Thank you, Chief Kidd. But most importantly, thank you to you all. We know that you are dealing with a crisis. And we recognize the need for more support for your communities, for your families. And I want you to know, the state of Texas, 
will do everything possible to secure the border and to keep your communities safe. Thank you all. God bless you all. And God bless the great state of Texas. An unrelenting stream of immigration, nonstop, nonstop. It's not going to stop, nor should we want it to stop. And as a matter of fact, uh, um, it's one of the things I think we can be most proud of. So. Uh